the KPFA Local Governing Board. Please review my record and proposals for KPFA and vote for me and 17 other candidates committed to building a strong, alternative, non-corporate, progressive radio station. If elected, I will work to strengthen local governance, increase listener-sponsored financial contributions, establish clear administrative structures and accountability to listener-sponsored communities, and establish authentic group-centered program and operational diversity. Please vote for me. My more than 40-year listener-sponsored membership, my participation on several policy committees, program council, diversity, etc., my work as a volunteer, outreach, fundraising, etc., contribute to the growth of KPFA Pacifica and deserve, I feel, and believe your vote. Thank you. For more information on voting, email election at kpfa.org or call 510-848-6767, extension 626. This is KPFA Berkeley, KPFB Berkeley, and KFCF Fresno. Now back to regularly scheduled programming. And you're listening to 94.1 FM KPFA Berkeley, 89.3 FM KPFB Berkeley, and 88.1 FM KFCF in Fresno. Please stay tuned for Pushing Limits. Wow, that was smooth. That was the talented South African couple and New and Marun. They are both beautiful, black and blind in musicians. What a wonderful way to introduce Pushing Limits on KPFA 94.1 FM. As we enter Black History Month 2004, we are going to stay on this African theme with Harambe Educational Council of Oakland, the annual artistic event called Kumba with the director of Harambe, Oakland, Sonia Jackson. And one of the many artists featured at Kumba, Michael Bernard Dawkins of San Francisco Creativity Explored, who is the author of a new book that just came out a couple a week ago called Fears of My Life. Of your life. Of your life. Thank you, Michael. You're welcome. That was published by Manic D Press in San Francisco. Welcome, everybody, my guests, to KPFA in Pushing Limits. Hi. Good to be here. Hello, Michael. Hello, Sonia. All right. Great. Thank you for being here. So, let's start with Sonia. You know, in December, the African American community celebrated Kwanzaa. Harambe is one of the terms celebrated during Kwanzaa. What does Harambe mean, and what is the mission of Harambe Educational Council, Sonia? Well, Harambe comes from a word that means working together. It's like a chant that was used where people work together and trying to push forward and creating and building. Part of Harambe's mission here for us in the Bay Area 
is to continue working together with African American persons with disabilities and trying to help them create an environment that will continue to grow and be fruitful for as many disabled people as possible. Thank you so much, Sonia. And you know what what is this annual event called Kumba? Well Kumba is also one of the words from Kwanzaa, which represent artists. We have a lot of African American disabled artists that have not really come out and been recognized. This was Harambe's way of beginning that process. We held our first exhibit last year for Black History Month, which really turned out very well. We had a lot of people with disabilities that for the first time were beginning to get recognized for the talents that they have. We're really hoping this year to feature new artists here in the Bay Area and hopefully for all to see the talent that is in our area when it comes to the arts. Yes, and we do have some extraordinary talents, extraordinary artists, you know, poets, um, visual artists, um, singers. It's just incredible, incredible history and incredible um, community that we have here. Harambe Educational Council is, is a statewide organization, right? Is that right, Tony? Yes, it is. It originated in Los Angeles, and their mission, again, was to educate, disseminate information in the African community to help disabled people. And we've continued that mission here in the Bay Area through a conference that we give once a year, and now our second year doing Kumba, an art exhibit for the disabled. Great. Kumba, Kumba. You know, come out and support Kumba and Harambe Educational Council and also, um, you know, see our work and see our talents. So um, where is Kumba going to be exhibited? Where and when? Well, last year we were very blessed to get the Oakland Library at the East Mont Mall because of the turnout and I guess really bringing it back to the community, we were asked to bring it back again this year. So this year, again, we'll be located at the Oakland Public Library, East Mount Mall Branch. It's located at 7200 Bancroft Avenue, Suite 211, and that's in Oakland. Our exhibit will stay at the Oakland Library until the end of Black History Month. We're really excited. We hope people come out, and we're also wishing that people sign a book that we're going to leave there so that we can continue informing the community of activities that Kumba and Harambe are participating in. Great, great. Um, you listen up, KPFA listeners. Get out and support Harambe and Kumba. Um, all of Federal it will be out, so support our artwork. You know, um, how many artists are exhibiting? How do you um, recruit artists every year? What we do, we send out probably around November a letter and a flyer announcing Kumba. Along with that, there's a guide that goes along with that information to tell people what kind of artwork we're looking for, how to get your exhibit put into the whole pool of artwork that's going to be exhibited. And usually it's pretty word of mouth. A lot of people either get it by mail or they've been familiar with Harambe and now know that Kumba is very much a part of Harambe. Um, we do a lot of outreach in the community, also through agencies and through the school district. We have all ages that participated last year from preschool classes up through adults with severe to moderate disabilities. The artwork is phenomenal. What makes it really nice, unless we told you they were disabled artists, no one would ever know. They would look at them and respect them as an artist. So I think what we're really trying to do is continue to make it and a part of our community. The disabled community for many years have been put to the side, and there's so much talent out there, and this is our way to continue to highlight and showcase the talent that our Bay Area have in our disability community. Well, you know, I, I feel so um, uplifted and so proud to be a part of Harambe. Um, Leeway Moore is um, 
on on the board of Harambe, and it's just incredible to see such a platform where we can display our artwork, you know, and it goes back in history with um, Horace Pippen, the first black disabled painter, so it's it's great that we're, um, you know, living and enjoying the fruits of our artistic brothers and sisters out there. Last year, Cuba featured life itself, starring Michael B. Loggins. Well, Michael Loggins is back with his new published book, and he's going to be here to speak to it. How are you doing, Michael? All right. All right. So, you know, tell tell us about this new book that just, just came out on Manic D Press in San Francisco. I guess because I, I thought I thought like um maybe like in in August in August it came out like a, maybe like Wednesday August um fourteen two thousand three when I made the book that is great you, you know I was I was looking at this book last night at Modern Times Bookstore in the city and I was cracking up you know <laughs> there's, there's such a great um knowledge and um, artwork. It's called Fears of Your Life. You know, uh, Michael Loggins um, has, what, about 200 fears? 200, no, 138. 138 fears. So, Michael, can can you um, share us some of your fears that's in this gorgeous book? Yeah. Can you read some for, for our audience? So far right here, I got number four, fears, fear of monsters being under my bed, fear of intruders coming into the house to steal things and hurt us all. That's one of them. Mm. Number 11, fear of noises and bumps in the middle of the night. Great. You know, I, I was looking at... Um, at section three, when you talk about, um, you know, um, about the mother, yeah, about the mother <laughs> coming down the, uh, the elevator and realize that mm. she had the wrong hand of her child, and that and that was a fear, yeah, uh, of not knowing which hand that you grab a hold of, yeah, like like going down the escalator, grab onto a stranger and don't no. No, like just walking and let the escalator going and holding a person's hand. You know how you ask them to grab onto a stranger's hand and you think that the person by mistake will be your mother. Mm hmm. And, and that. this is the wrong person. That's yeah, great. And it'd be the wrong person. That's great. Thank, thank you, Mike. You know, even if your mother is at home, but you, you know, that's how I think you make mess up and make mistakes in your life. And you, you go somewhere and you think that you forgot that your mother is, is at home, right? Mm hmm And you go somewhere and you see somebody that looks almost like your mother, and you grab a whole tour and, and, you, and you thought that you were lost in, in a uh, shopping mall. Yeah, like that. yeah it's, especially during the holidays. There's so many people. Yeah, scary feeling, huh? Yeah, very scary. So, so, Michael, you know, these drawings inside the book, are, are those your drawings, too? Yeah. So, you're, you're also a drawer and a poet, huh? Yeah. Great, great. Kind of mix, kind of blend them in together. Great. And you, you can pick up this book at your local independent bookstores, Cody's Modern Times Bookstore, or you can get in contact with Manic D Press in San Francisco, Manic D Press dot com, or give them a call at four one five six four eight eight two eight eight. Um, give them a call because this is a great book and it's a great book. For today's society, I think today's society is um, going through a lot of fears, politically and socially. Mm-hmm. So it's a great, it's a great timing to have this book out. Yeah. So thank you, Michael. You're welcome. So Sonia, 
How can people get involved with Harambe? Well, Harambe meets the first Saturday of each month at the Oakland YWCA. That's at 1515 Webster Street in Oakland. We meet from 10 to 12. Harambe's meetings are to organize the community around our upcoming conference. We also partner with Parenting University, and we do classes that are around the Bay Area at different school sites on different topics related to disability and kids in school. Um, this year, we are working on our 2004 conference. This is our fifth year. We're really excited that we've made it for five years here in the Bay Area, speaking about disabilities in the black community and having the reception from the community so very overwhelming. So we're hoping to pull in as many people this year to help us celebrate our fifth year. Um, there's lots of ways you can get involved. You can come to monthly meetings. You can be available to Harambe when we need outreach in the community. We're always looking for help and support on other ways that we can continue growing and developing this organization. We have a lot of work to do here in the Bay Area when it comes to the disability of a lot of our family, our friends, our loved ones, our babies, our elder. And I think this is an opportunity for all of them to meet together on that first Saturday, share experiences, share information, and also give back to Harambe the knowledge of what is needed in our community. So what's, what's the phone number where people can call you? They can always reach me at the Family Resource Network, which is another wonderful organization that works with families who have children with disability. I've been working with the Family Resource Network for close to 10 years now, and I tell you I've met some incredible people. And you can always reach me there at 547-7322. That's area code 510. Okay, we're back here, pushing limits on KPFA 94.1 FM. We're here at the Pina Cultural Center in Berkeley. So I'm so glad to be here with Lee Williams to talk about his visual artwork. He was in Cuba last year. And Lee, so glad to have you here in pushing limits. Oh, gee, thank you. <laughs> but um, talk about your visual artwork, Lee. Well, I was honored to, to uh, be in Kumba last year. I had three pieces up, um, and I'm getting ready to put one of those pieces up for auction at the, um, the Black Hawk Automotive Museum in Danville. Uh, they're having um, a, a disability safari out there because uh, Mr. Ken Bering, um, he's in, in two years he's given away a million wheelchairs. I mean, it's just, it's just phantasmagorical. And so I'm putting up uh, one of the pieces that, that I showed at Kumba, you know, um, for auction out there to, to help support, you know, him giving the wheelchairs away. That's great, and I know last year you had a lot of self-portraits of yourself in Cuba. And how, how did you paint yourself and at the same time, you know, um, it, it seems to me it's kind of hard to paint yourself when you're doing the painting yourself. Well, I, I was looking in a mirror, and... Actually, when you look in a mirror, you don't really see what you really look like mm -hmm. um, because your left side becomes your right side and vice versa. You know, everything is in reverse. So the only way that you can get a true image of yourself other than three dimension is by having two mirrors, having one mirror looking at the reflection of your reflection. See what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's how I went about doing it. Well, tell, tell me about, um, you know, being an African-American and being a person with, with, with a disability. Is it hard to get your visual artwork out there to the, to the mainstream community? Um, yes and no. Um, 
I, I'm I'm a black artist because I'm black. Um, I don't I don't simply do a lot of African style work. I I do what my heart tells me and what I'm feeling like. Like at the moment, I'm doing gourds and rocks. I'm I'm, I'm doing um, uh, whatever strikes my heart. I do animals and flowers and. I'd like to do one of you, fella. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because Bill Bruckner did a portrait of me years ago. Mm -hmm. And Bill Bruckner is an artist from San Francisco, a disabled artist. And and he said that it's so hard to do um, a black person as a portrait. Mm -hmm. And he, he had trouble with me and Celeste White that's also... African American. Um, have you done any other portraits except yourself? Oh, for sure. I, the one that I'm auctioning off is is uh, one of Vincent, the the um, the beast that was you know on TV with yeah. Beauty and the Beast, and um, it's 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 a 50 pound piece. It's on a an oak table, and it's shaped. In, in the shape of a, a guitar pick, you know, so, uh, like a triangle, and um, I, I won I won first place in the nationals uh, by doing um, uh, a cowboy. I mean, he's a, a western singer, you know, and um, I did one of um, Sheila E's sister, Zena. Okay. Oh, yeah, Dwight Yoakam was the cowboy that, that I did. He's a cowboy singer, and uh, I was looking forward to trying to get him to sign it so that, you know, the value would go up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How long, how long have you been painting? I, I've been painting for about 30 years now. Um, what, what brought you into the visual art arena? Well, when I was a kid, um, I always wanted to... to draw superheroes I wanted to do the, the comic book scene and uh, to answer your question earlier um, I was told that they couldn't do a black superhero mm -hmm. so uh, that kind of crushed my desire to be a, you know a comic strip artist and um, so when I became mature uh, I shot at it again and I more or less ran into the same problem so I wound up being a fine artist <laughs> <laughs> um, do, uh, do you have any last words for like on um, youth that's grown up disabled youth that want to get into to the art field um, not only visual arts but I know you're a poet musician so how do the youth break into that field um I, I won't say the, these are last words because I'm, I'm definitely a, an activist as far as art and, and music is concerned. Um, diligence is primarily the key and education. And um, so I, I think that's one of the, the major, major things. And then find yourself a good agent. And if, if possible at all, you know, take it to your parents that you, you are interested in art because if they don't know, you know, they, they might be engrossed in just trying to make a living for you, and they think that your doodling is just frivolous, and it isn't, you, you see. So let them know that you're serious about it and go about doing it. So you hear that from Lee Williams? Go about doing it, and let people know that you're serious about it. And um, thank you, KPFA listeners, Pushing Limits crew, and Vinny at the mic. This is Leroy Moore, and this is KPFA 94.1 FM. Um, stay tuned in February for another episode of Pushing Limits, where we're going to discuss the Black Panthers and disability issues. Here's Jan Santos of Pushing Limits to announce a very important meeting in the Berkeley disability community. As part of the City of Berkeley Americans with Disabilities Act, Title II, 
Self-evaluation meetings are being held to learn about the experiences people with disabilities have had when using City of Berkeley services or participating in the city's programs and activities. ADA self-evaluation community meeting schedule. Thursday, February 5th, 6 to 8 p.m., North Berkeley Senior Center, 1901 Hearst Street. Wednesday, February 18th, 1 to 3 p.m., South Berkeley Senior Center, 2939 Ellis Street. The senior centers are accessible to people using wheelchairs, and assistive listening devices will be available at these meetings. To request a sign language interpreter, real-time captioning, or other accommodations, please call 981-6346-VOICE or 981-6345-TDD. Providing at least five working days notice will help to ensure availability. Please refrain from wearing scented products to these meetings. If you are unable to attend any meetings, you can still participate. Give your feedback on a disability community questionnaire. For a copy, call Don Brown, Disability Compliance Specialist at 981-6346-VOICE or 981-6345-TDD. On behalf of the Pushing Limits Collective, this is Jan Santos wishing you a good evening. And you're tuned to KPFA or KPFB in Berkeley, KFCF in Fresno. These are your listener-sponsored stations in Central and Northern California, where the time is 6.56. Coming up in just a few moments, it's KPFA's Act One Radio Theater. Tonight, A View from the Bridge by Arthur Miller, a dramatic portrait of Italian-American immigrant life in the 1950s. That's the backdrop of this theater classic about love and revenge that's coming up after these very important announcements about our elections here in Pacifica Radio and KPFA. We'll be right back with the play. This is Radio Station. KPFA Berkeley, KPFB Berkeley, and KFCF Fresno. Listener-sponsored, grassroots community radio. We interrupt regularly scheduled programming to bring you this important message. I'm Amy Goodman. Democracy is coming to Pacifica Radio and KPFA. Vote as if the survival of KPFA and Pacifica depended on your vote. It does. 48 candidates are running for 18 slots on the newly chartered KPFA local station board. Read more about the new bylaws, the new board, and the candidates at election.kpfa.org. Remember, we need a large turnout for the election to be valid. Read the candidate statements included with your ballot and vote for all of the candidates whom you agree with. Here are three statements from listener candidates running for the KPFA local station board. Listen in. KPFA Local Station Board candidate, Gerald Sanders. My name is Gerald Sanders. I'm a union electrician and have over 40 years of activism behind me. I've been involved in such movements as the movement to free Mumia Abul Jamal. I'm a supporter of Berkeley Cop Watch. I have been active in community radio like KPU, KALX, Free Radio Berkeley, and Berkeley Liberation Radio. In the course of all my activities, it has become increasingly clear how important KPFA is to our community. Since Pacifica is under the gun, my primary concern is to ensure that the stations we already have continue to exist. I would also like to see Pacifica extended to many new locations. I would also like to assist KPFA in deepening its roots in the black community and the labor movement. I think that the fact that I am a socialist gives me a perspective that strengthens my ability to bring people together at a time when we are being attacked by the powers that be up and down the line. Brothers and sisters, I would appreciate your vote. KPFA Local Station Board candidate, Sepeda Kosroja. My name is Sepeda Kosroja. I'm an Iranian-American woman born in a family of political activists. I have been a KPFA listener and member since early 80s. However, it was not until our community was on the verge of losing this great institution that I appreciate the true value of Pacifica KPFA. During crisis, I became a KPFA Pacifica activist in my community, making phone calls, sending emails, asking people to come to demonstrations, and making financial contributions. I've always been a political activist in my life and participated in the struggles for freedom and justice in Iran and throughout the world. I love KPFA, and I believe in Pacifica's mission statement. I believe that KPFA 
is on the right track. However, KPFA can improve in certain areas like children programming. We need extensive children.